Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it's a bit of a change of tempo. I've been listening to wonderful talks in very precise and, con and concise terms. And now we move into a domain that's a little more philosophy. And I hope to be just as precise. But for me, it's a little more difficult. More, well, it's difficult anyway. We'll see how it goes. The subject intent and the process of becoming conscious. And the, as this subject is a vast subject, the hope I have is of going into one small element, of shining a light in, in one small area of it, which is the area of concept formation. How do we form concepts? What are concepts? And uh, if, if we can just handle that little bit, because it's not, it's quite in the center of things, since there's, it's about the relationship between subject and its object, the knower and the known, the observer and the observed. So the role of intent in concept formation. Intent, this is what we'll be talking about. Intent, what is it? Concepts, how do they arise? A, a, just a, a brief look at intent and causality, and some implications of it all. Now, as a starting point, I want to take a letter to the new scientist in the most recent edition. That was a short letter that was referring to an article that was there earlier, by, that was published earlier by David Bainbridge. And this is what the letter said. Uh, David Brainbridge's description of consciousness, including, for example, the fact that we do not know where in the brain consciousness happens, was evocative. Scott McLeod, in his book Understanding Comics, describes a comics story as whatever is happening in the blank spaces between the panels. And he goes on to say this. Oops, sorry. What if in our minds, what if our minds function like a comic? They snap pictures, and our consciousness is simply the story the mind constructs around these pictures. I'll let you take a second look. Now, I pick up three points from this. One point seems to be the suggestion that the crucial part is happening outside of consciousness, not in the conscious mind. The second point that I consider is the fact that the mind is consciousness and unconsciousness. It's one system working apparently in two manners. This is not directly stated. It's not denied and not stated in this. And the third point is the point that's left out. And it's left out very commonly in discussions of this sort. And that is the question of intent and the implication of intent in this whole, in, 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 in the working of the mind. So uh, let's move there. What is intent? Let's say you have the intent to overtake a vehicle on the road. You want to pass someone up. Where is that intent? You might have the thought in your mind, but the thought isn't yet the intent. The intent is somewhere deeper. The intent to overtake is something you feel more vis viscerally. You have a muscle tension. You have maybe a facial expression that goes with it. You clasp the, the, the wheel a little tighter, the driving wheel, and so forth. It works through the whole muscular system and the, maybe the blood and the heart. And in the end of it all, if we're looking for the origin of intent, we've got to go into maybe every cell of the body. On the other hand, if we look for the outcome, the 
the objective of intent, it's very easy. The objective of intent to overtake is to overtake. If, the, you're a, if you have the intent to stand up, the objective is to stand up. If you have the intent to be home at uh, 7 o'clock, the intent, in other words, we name it by its endpoint, by the outcome, which is single. And the origin of intent sort of gets lost. It goes, it multiplies, becomes, it's, mul it's multi-pronged going back. A, a very rough diagram, we can just think of intent. The outcome on the, on the right is singular. And as we go back, it sort of dissipates into the whole system. Um, now, uh, oh, look at that. Hmm? Uh, wait, wait, you wait here. Oh, I'll wait here. <laughs> uh, technical difficulty. <laughs> what? What was in your mind while I was doing that? What was happening? What did you think? While I'm doing that, wait, wait a moment. Yes? What, what was going on? Now, I could ask this, but we're not going to manage in 20 minutes. So what I do is very quickly, I say with all the different th things that came and you imagined in your mind, there's one place where you were all, where you all had the same, had, had the same structure. And that is on intent. The intent that you have here, you all meet on it. And what is that intent? What is the intent where we were all common? Yes? To, what was going on, no. to, to, to wonder what's going on, yes. But some of you might have thought, yes, something, I was picking up something. So the intent, the intent was that there's something there. So we all met on the intent that there be a thing. That's very important. It's not nothing. The fact that there has to be some entity there. So we were all aiming at entityhood, if you want to call it. Something that has to be at the end. I can't remember what my next slide is. Yes. So, if we look at the, a, oh, it's moved. <laughs> Here it comes. And by the way, you were right over there. It's a, it is a ladybug. Yes. See. And when I say the, lady, the word ladybug, what comes into your mind? Yes. Again. Some people have an image, some people have something that they, a memory that comes back, some people might see the word written up or hear the word or whatever it is, but these are only the triggers of the concept. The concept, ladybug, that you have in your mind is actually myriad things coming together. It's small, it's red, it's spotted, the whole idea of insect, alive, able to fly, what's it doing inside in the room, and memories that you have and all sorts of associations of maybe joy and beauty. And there are so many things that all fuse together in that moment when you say, when you come to the idea or form the concept, ladybug. How does that happen? If it were the rational mind, it couldn't do it. All those things we can't think of all at once in a, sudden, in a split second. And even if we did, it would be a compendium of things. It wouldn't be some one thing fused like it was. So what is actually going on at that moment? And the answer to the problem comes back to what we said about intent. Intent, you, threw the, you throw the intent out of coming up with something, and depending on what thing that is, a whole area of qualities sort of change into attributes of that object, and you have the object that you're talking about. And so if I 